In this class of tutorial, we want to talk about uh, the Stella 3D plugin, which uh, has been developed by our uh, team members in Parametric House. And actually, what it does is a simulation for particles. As you can see, uh, we can model something like this. In Grasshopper, I'm going to talk and explain about how the plugin works. And as you can see, we can define the lifespan of the particles, which you can see here. Uh, we can define uh, the noise of the plugin. So uh, particles, if I just decrease that uh, and start it again, you can see it's going to just give you a curve on a path like this. So it's basically has different parameters which you can change. Uh, for example, I can also change the uh, vector of the shooting particles. So you can see that I can define the direction and also uh, a multiplication which is for the attraction factor you can see I can increase or decrease that and produce different results uh, so basically this tutorial will help you to understand how to get started with the Stellar 3D plugin uh, and get used to the basics and at the end what we want to do is to uh, convert these curves uh, into a mesh which is going to be like this and we're going to use the Dendro plugin uh, to make this volume. So be sure to watch the video till the end uh, so you can get uh, how the, the way you can uh, convert the curves into a mesh volume. Okay, before we get started, if you're new to our channel, welcome. Remember to subscribe because we have weekly tutorials. And I'm going to also put a playlist if you're new to our uh, new to Grasshopper so you can learn what is Grasshopper, how it works and get started with it. And also if you want to learn Grasshopper uh, more professionally, want to learn more uh, definitions and tutorials, you can also enroll in our course which I will put the playlist up here which you can check out and see the lessons. Okay, let's get started from scratch and uh, for installing the plugin you have to put it in the file special folder and in the components folder uh, remember to install both uh, the Stella okay, let me just type this here Stella 3D plus Dendro uh, the Stella 3D is developed by our team and the Dendro is going to be in the link in the description for the example file so what you want to do is to put them in the components folder and restart your Rhino Grasshopper you also be sure to check out that uh, for example, for the Dendro, uh, right-click on each of those files and go to the properties and see if there is an unblock here. So remember, if you, for example, let's go to Stella. And if you see an unblock here, just tick the unblock and then restart the Rhino Grasshopper. That's going to also help you to solve the issues. Okay, so after installing the plugin, we will have something like an S here, which is our plugin, the Stella. And basically, it's going to simulate particles and the movement. Uh, what I want to do is to uh, go here with the Big Bang and use the uh, Big Bang component. Uh, the Big Bang component, as you can see here, is the solver component, which simulates the forces and applies on the stars. Uh, let me just put the bifocals plugin. Okay, and this is the basics. Uh, first of all, we have to define an environment. The environment is uh, the volume, the noise, and those things. You can see that we have an environment tool here. That's really easy. You have to just connect the environment to the environment. That's it. Uh, for now, to make everything easy, what I want to do is to just define uh, forces and noise. Uh, in the future tutorials, we have to but we can also define B-reps, which, which is the boundary of the particles. So in the future tutorials, we're going to talk about that. Uh, for now, I'm just going to talk about the forces and noise. So the forces is a vector which uh, applies a vector to the forces. If you don't give this anything, uh, the particles are, go are going to go randomly uh, in space. So you don't have any control on that. Okay. Uh, what I want to do is to define a vector. So I can define the shooting of these particles. Uh, I'm going to go to the vector here and use this uh, construct vector like XYZ. 
just give that to the forces. Uh, make that a, as small as possible, so it's smaller than one for the x component and y component and z component. And because I want to show this vector to visualize the shooting direction, I'm going to go to the display and use this uh, vector display to show the vectors. Uh, what we need here is to give this to the vector to show it and the anchor, which is the point, let's just extract that and set that to a point so it's like zero. It's going to show the vector, but the vector is too small. I want to just visualize that uh, bigger. So I'm going to go to the vector and expression, uh, maybe 50 times star x, which can help you uh, to understand in which direction you are shooting the stops. So this is going to be helpful uh, to understand the direction. Uh, uh, for the next step, what I want to do is to also just multiply that with the math. So let's give this a multiplication and give it to the force so I can control also uh, and make it smaller or bigger. That's the first step for the forces. Uh, for the noise, you can just go to the a noise menu and you can see here we have random noise and simplex. I'm going to just use this simplex noise. Give it here. Uh, the factor is a number between 0 and 1. So 0 is going to give you no noise and 1 is going to give that uh, maximum noise possible. So remember you can also change that number. Okay, that's the first step to define the environment. Uh, the next step is to uh, define the star uh, properties. Uh, what I want to do is to go here and you can see that it says that you have to use the star attribute to simulate. Here in the particles we have this star properties. So we're going to give this to the star properties. So remember the first step is environment, then it's star properties. Okay, the star properties, the only thing we uh, want to talk about is the lifespan. Uh, basically the lifespan is uh, when the particle moves uh, in a direction, it's going to die uh, after several years, for example. So you can define the years of that particle here. I'm going to give that maybe from 10 to 200 and change uh, the lifespan. By increasing the lifespans, the particles are going to move uh, further. And when you just decrease that, that's going to die at the start. So uh, that's it. Initial acceleration is not really important here. We want to make it as simple as possible. Uh, the next one is maximum allowed stars. You can see if you put that to zero, there is no limit, and the simulation is going to just produce some stars on that, uh, but the default is 50. So I'm going to just give this a number slider, so zero to maybe 300. Uh, the zero is going to give us uh, the maximum, and then I'm going to increase that so you can see how we can control the stars here. Okay, uh, the emitting speed is something between 0 and 1. You can see that uh, 0 is going to be the maximum and 1 is no emitting speed. Don't put that into 1 because it's going to stop the uh, simulation. So you can also have a control on that. Just give a number slider here to the emitting speed. Okay part which is the most important part is the emitter source it means that uh, what is the source of the emission of those stars now we can go to the big bang and use this star emitting source so i'm going to just put that star emitting source and give that to the emitter source that's the born source uh, which you can see that you can give it a point several points you can define that but for this example i'm going to just give that same point for the starting. So those uh, stars are going to shoot from the point we are showing the vector. So that's it. You can give that several points also. That's fine. And the next part is the star attractor. So uh, let's just don't give anything here. Uh, maybe just uh, start with the simulation uh, and the attraction factor which is related to the star Tractor, you have to give this points and then you can define uh, how much those points are going to attract the stars. So now we can run the simulation. I'm going to give this a button to the reset, which you can reset 
your simulation here and you can also just define a timer and put that to 20 milliseconds for example and connect that to here okay uh, for the output, we have to go to the particle and just uh, we can use these two tools show stars and star trade. So, for the show stars, if I put that here, and you can see it's shooting. If I reset that, that's the stars. If I decrease the multiplication to zero, it's going to be random. And if I increase that multiplication, they are going to go in that direction. Again, we can change the direction. And if you reset, everything is going to be run again. Okay. So these are going to give you the points. The next thing you can use is the star trail. That's really easy. And you will have these curves, which is going to give you and show you uh, the way these stars are shooting. So that's it. That's really easy to control. Uh, what you can control is the lifespan. So if I decrease that, that's going to be short. You can see they're going to die. And if I increase that, they are going to be longer. They're going to die there. Okay. Uh, what we want to do is to control this with several a star attractor, which is really going to give you more control on this. So I'm going to give this a point. And let's assume that this is shooting. Uh, we want them to come towards a point, a point attractor here, and then again move towards another point attractor. So I'm going to give this two point attractors. Uh, because they are shooting, remember, they're going to start move. They, uh, at, this, at the beginning, they're going to move. Then they have to come towards that point. So by defining the attraction factor. So let's just define two points. I'm going to define one here and one here to uh, define the attraction. And now we have to give this a factor. So I'm going to just say uh, 0 to 50 and then increase that. Okay. Now you can see that they are attracted towards this point and then they're going to go to the second one. Let's just decrease the lifespan. and increase this. You can see it's going to help us control the direction and then we can just move them in the space, bring them a little bit up, bring them here and then they're going to move in that direction. So that's the way you can control the direction of these curves. That's it. Okay. Uh, if you want to just pause it, you have to double click on the timer. It's going to pause anyway. Uh, by controlling the number of stars, uh, you can see that. Let's just stop that. You can see you can decrease the number of the curves by defining the maximum load stars. And when I increase it and just play this, you can see it's going to run like that. Remember, you can always define multiple shooting so maybe i just want to define like that shoot that you can see that's going to shoot several points so that's really cool you have the control on it and i'm going to put that to zero and start it again to get the control and pause it whenever i want so remember you can just decrease or increase the uh, number of load stars and also the lifespan is controllable the most important thing is also a simplex noise, for example, if I put that to zero and restart this, you can see it's going to give you uh, a path simply with the curve like that. And if you increase that, that's going to give you some noise and make it like this. So that's the first step by using uh, the Stella uh, 3D plugin. Be sure to give us your feedback. Uh, about how this plugin is helping you uh, and we are excited to share your works in our page Stella 3D in the Parametric House website and we are also going to make more tutorials about this plugin in the near future but for now 
uh, this is the stars demonstrations of the trial. You can see it here. What I want to do is that because the output is polyline curve, I want to show that in a NURBS scope. So I'm going to go to the curve section, utility, and use this smooth polyline. So I'm going to smooth the polylines. The strength is 1, which is maximum. And now we have to define the times we want to smooth that, maybe like 15 times. And turn this off. And you can see that this is going to help you to smooth those curves. OK. So these are the curves. And this is the smoothing. Then we can just go to utility and use this rebuild curve. Uh, put a degree 3 because we want to make that nerves. And maybe a 50 number of counts is going to be fine. So if I just run this again at the start, you can see that we have these curves smoother. And we can just pause that. Okay. So that is how we can produce a smoother curve, which is nerves. And if I bake that, we will have them in the Rhino simulation. That's it. OK. Uh, what I usually use to uh, produce a mesh, uh, like uh, as I just uh, showed you before, uh, is the Dendro plugin. Dendro is really cool. But the technique for using it with Stella is, first of all, go to the curve and divide this curve uh, into points. So I'm going to divide this, uh, turn this off, and maybe 50 points, increase these points so we can see the points in the space. And uh, at the end, we have to flatten these points because uh, they are into the groups of each curve. You can see each curve has 55 points. We don't need that. We have to flatten this. If you don't know about flatten and graft, I want to put that tutorial up here to check out how the data trees work. So I'm going to just flatten this. Okay. And now just go to the vector point and use this call duplicates to delete the duplicates. Points. So you can see that if it's 12,000, it's going to go to like 4,000. That's going to reduce those points and uh, use this technique to have the points for Dendro. So I'm going to go to the Dendro plugin, convert, and use this points to volume. So I'm going to just put that points to volume, give this points because we want to make the volume. Uh, for the radius, maybe for this project, it's like 2.5. Just define the radius which you want to give to, this, to these points to make a sphere around it, right? And we have to control that later. The setting is really important, so we have to go to the convert and use this create settings. So I'm going to make this settings work. Uh, the voxel size, which you can see it's going to give you complete results, something like that, uh, by decreasing or increasing uh, maybe 2.25, increasing or decreasing the voxel size, it's going to make this uh, more detailed. So remember, don't decrease that number, maybe 1.2 is fine. And then we can just give this a radius. You can see that this is going to give us the radius. And by increasing and decreasing that, that's going to be the, uh, uh, the things you can define the voxel size. It's basically the resolution of your work, okay? You can define it like that. Uh, the bandwidth is the desired radius in voxel units around the surface. That's fine for one. The uh, ISO value is a number which you can control between 0 and 1. Let me just skip that. And by changing that, you can see it's not really important. OK. And adaptivity, the range between 0 and 1. Not really important. The most important thing part is the voxel size. You can see that's not really changing our volume. That's the volume we want. What I usually do is to also go to the filters and use this smooth volume, make it a little bit smooth. Give the volume to the volume. Uh, the type of the smoothing thing, 
I usually prefer to put it to zero Gaussian, so I'm going to just put this to zero because it's going to give you more smooth results like that. And we can decrease that to one to give it more details, okay? Or even 0.8, okay? And the iteration will just make that smoother and smoother. So if I just put that to three, it's going to just make it a little bit slow, but you can see uh, how it's going to smooth that like this. Okay, uh, at the end, we can simply just connect a display, a custom preview to that. And you can see how this mesh is performing. It's going to make it a little bit slow, but just let me show you this. This is how it's working. It's like producing that in real time. And I can pause it any time if I want to, just by double clicking this timer. And that's how you can uh, have those meshes. So be sure to play with this. For example, what I want to do is to just disconnect this, turn this on, and play with this direction maybe. Put it a little bit higher. Restart this. Uh, play with this uh, attraction factor. Like this one. And if you just put that to zero, and also the multiplication of the vector to zero, and uh, just restart this, this is really cool. Uh, you can have random distribution like that. It's like randomly shooting those stars which you can pause anywhere. And again, you can connect that and produce something like this. And you can also use the dendro, let's just go to the end, and volume to mesh to convert that to mesh also. So that's really easy. You have to give this to the volume. The volume setting is here. And you will have a mesh. That's also another way. You can have the mesh and you can render the mesh like this. So that's how you can have the mesh in Rhino and produce the results. Okay, thanks for watching and remember to like this video and subscribe to our channel. Uh, how was the tutorial and how was our Stellar 3D plugin? It's just in the first uh, phase of development, the beta stage, and we're going to develop more tools for the Stellar 3D plugin, which is basically going to give you more control uh, on the shooting of these particles. And in the future tutorials, I'm going to give you more and more uh, exciting things you can add for the forces, for the noise, random noise, and those things. But for now, I think that this tutorial will get you uh, started with the Stellar 3D plugin. Okay, see you next time and thanks for watching.